Spark and Bank. The chairman of Global Internet and Entertainment Group, NASPERS, has pushed back against investors, urging a breakup of the South African e commerce and pay TV giant. Mr. Rob Van Jake describes the move as lacking long term commercial merit. NASPERS, which is one of the largest technology investors in the world, is a $100 billion multinational with private equity style investments in e commerce platforms such as auction sites, online retail, and e classifieds. Well, this owes much of that valuation to its 33% 10 cent stake, which is worth about $132 billion or 32% more than NASPERS itself. The discount has prompted some investors to urge NASPERS leadership team, including Chairman Kuz Becker, to sell the stake in order to close the discount. NASPERS has spent some $4 billion since 2012 to drive growth mainly in e-commerce platforms that include mobile classifieds, apps, LetGo and OLX, but it has little to show for its investments so far. It's once again rolled the breakneck rise of Tencent to lift its annual earnings by more than 40% on Friday, while the e-commerce unit widened losses to $682 million. The Beirut based private equity firm Euromena Funds is seeking investments in Lebanese owned companies operating abroad to double its assets. The company, which raised $350 million in 2006, recently invested $55 million in Nigeria and Tunisia and Morocco. The debt fund targets a $200 million, uh, another $100 million in private equity within Africa, as well as $10 million investments per enterprise in Levon. Yermena is expanding its geographical footprint to tap into the Lebanese diaspora. The United Kingdom's departure from the European Union could cause a 40% loss of passengers to the country's airline industry if the government fails to reach a new aviation deal with the EU before October 2018, and that's according to a recent report commissioned by leading British airports. The Westminster Policy Institute has submitted the report to the British government and urged it to start negotiating over a post-Brexit aviation deal with the EU as soon as possible. The consultancy is acting on behalf of management of major airports in the country, including Manchester Airport, Stansted Airport, Heathrow Airport, Catwick Airport and London City Airport. The report warns that if current uncertainties continue, the airports could see the number of their air passengers, most of whom book months in advance, plunge by about 41%. Spokesperson for Manchester Airport and Stansted Airport said a lack of renewed agreement after Brexit would be a disadvantage for UK's airline industry, which is unlike other sectors that can still operate on the World Trade Organization agreements after Brexit. Certainly the airline industry is one of the most concerned because without the EU Open Skies agreement, then British Airlines will not be able to, to fly um, between European airports and they may not all even be able to fly to um, European airport. European airline Ryanair of Ireland flying a lot between Britain and the EU is concerned about the route after the UK's exit. But there are clearly some questions and um, the, uh, the head of um, Ryanair, Michael O'Leary, has been very clear that um, a, a lot of flights simply wouldn't take place uh, if there wasn't clarity on this question of EU access to the, uh, sorry, UK access to the EU um, aviation market. The report says that without an early guarantee, EU citizens' withdrawal from Britain after March 2019, when Brexit is expected to take place, alone could seriously cut back the passenger number. Almost half of the air schedule travellers in the following year could change their plans due to uncertainty in routes. Some economists say that the worst thing that could happen to the British airline industry is that air passengers would drop by 8 million in 2019. Others estimate that the reduced passenger number could be 2.3 million with an 11.5% decline.
Meanwhile, Paris is on track to welcome more tourists this year than ever before after a bumper first half. Data from the Regional Tourism Board shows the Paris region registered 16.4 million arrivals in the six months of June, and that's the highest in any first half of the year since current records began in 2008. The 10.2 percent year-on-year bounce in first-half arrivals was driven by a 14.9 percent rise in foreign tourists led by Americans and Chinese. The Regional Tourism Committee puts the increase in the Paris region tourism at 10 percent on the first semester of 2017. The president of the committee attributes the recent growth to a higher number of international visitors with a strong comeback from Japanese, Chinese and American tourists. Tourism is doing better. Tourists are coming back, have found their way back to Paris and the region, and in unprecedented and historical proportions because it has been 10 years since we have known such a beautiful first semester, forecasting an exceptional 2017. Overall, international visitors figures grew by 14.5 percent compared to 2016. Numbers show Paris is bouncing back from a 2016 saddled by insecurity and social tensions. Valato also hopes the 2024 Olympics that Paris is expecting to win the bid for will help the region improve the quality of its services and make it more competitive with other top tourism destinations. We want to reaffirm the fact that Paris and its region are still the first touristic destination in the world. And above all, we have in mind that Paris will have the Olympic Games in 2024. It is only a matter of days now. And this prospect will be a wonderful boost to improve the quality of the welcome, but of the touristic offer overall of Paris and its region. So we want to reaffirm this place. So I think a lot of places it seems like uh, there's more uh, terrorist attacks around the world, but I think that if you stop traveling just because of that, that's what they want, you know, and I think um, we don't want to live in fear. I think that we don't need to fear um, what happens to us. If we lived in fear, then um, it just seems like that would stop us from living our lives fully. So I think you should keep traveling despite what terrorist attacks may be happening around the world. In 2016, the most visited Parisian monument was Notre Dame Cathedral. And in the first semester 2017, the LVMH Foundation experienced a rise of 174% in visitors' numbers, the highest rise of attendance for Paris museums, thanks to the temporary exhibition of the Shukin Collection. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.